All right, so this is our last example for today. Um, so we have um, a word problem. So a 50 foot supporting wire is to be attached to a 75 foot antenna. Because of surrounding buildings, sidewalks, and roadways, um, the wire must be anchored exactly 20 feet from the base of the antenna. So there are two parts to this question. Part A is asking how high from the base, so that would be the very bottom of the antenna, um, is the wire attached? And then part B says local regulations require that a supporting wire be attached at a height no less than three-fifths of the total height of the antenna. From part A, have local regulations been met? All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and the first thing that we should do um, is we should draw this out, okay? So let's go ahead and draw an antenna. Okay, and let's say this is the ground. Alright, so I know that this antenna is 75 feet from here to the ground. Okay, actually let's do something like this. Okay, and then what we know is that 20 feet away from the base, so the base would be the bottom of the antenna, so 20 feet away is where the wire um, is attached. So this distance right here is 20 feet. All right, and so the wire is attached here somewhere on the antenna. So the wire um, doesn't reach the top of the antenna. All right, and the wire we're told is 50 feet long. All right, so this distance is 50 feet. All right. So any time that you have a uh, something that's perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal, you make a 90 degree angle. All right. So we have a right angle there in this triangle. So the question is asking how high from the base of um, of the antenna is the wire attached? So what we're looking for, if we're looking at the base of the antenna, that's right here. And we want to look at this point where the wire is attached. So we're looking for this height. So we know that the height of the entire antenna is 75 feet, but we just want this piece right here. So we're going to call that X. All right. So hopefully you remember a little bit from geometry that when you have a right triangle, um, and you want to find a missing side, you can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. All right? So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You might be asking, well, what are we doing? We just did radicals. Why are we doing Pythagorean theorem? You'll see in just a second. So please remember that a and b are the um, legs of the triangle. So the legs would be like this part right here, the base, or this part right here, okay? C is the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse, you can easily identify it because it's usually, it's the slanted side, but it's also more specifically um, the side that's across the right angle, all right? So that's how you know for sure what your um, hypotenuse is. So let's go ahead and plug in. So I'm just gonna say that A is 20, so we have 20 squared. And my other side, my other leg, I don't know it, so I'm going to say x squared. And then my hypotenuse is 50, so we have 50 squared. All right. So we can go ahead and do a little bit of math. All right, so if we do 20 squared, we get 450 squared, we get 2,500. All right, we're going to subtract both sides by 400. And we get x squared equals 2100. Now we want to know what x is, not what x squared is. So we're going to square root. And this is where we see a radical. It's definitely not as complex as what we've been seeing. Um, but um, we have a radical here. So the square root of something squared, those two undo each other. They cancel each other. So we have x 
equals, and remember that when you square root something, you have plus or minus. You can have two positive answers or two negative answers. All right, and then the square root of 21, that has to be simplifiable, if that's a word. All right, so I know we have 7 times 300 for sure, right? Because 7 times 3 is 21, and then I add the two zeros. So 7 is prime. Uh, 300 is 30 times 10. 30 is 3 times 10. All right. I'm going to show you guys a shortcut. I already see that I have two matching 10s. If I keep breaking them down, I'm just going to end up with a pair of 5s and a pair of 2s that multiply to a pair of 10s. So I'm actually going to stop here. Because what I'm looking for, really, is pairs of things. So this simplifies to, here I have two 10s. So 10, and then 7 times 3 is 21. Alright, let me just check my work. Okay, so we have x equals plus or minus 10 radical 21. Now, if I were asking for a height, I wouldn't really give you this number. So let's go ahead and see in the calculator. Let's see what that number is. So 10, let me see if I can brighten this up first. Alright, so 10 radical 21 is about 45. Alright, um, I'm actually only going to use the positive because this definitely, you know, if we're thinking about this realistically, this can't be a negative distance, right? We're not like underwater or something like that. So I'm going to ignore the negative and I'm going to say this is approximately positive 45.8 feet. Alright, so that answers part A. Uh, sorry about the weird um, like cutoff at the last uh, part of the video. Uh, let's take a look at part B. So if we reread uh, part B, right, it's saying a local regulations require that a supporting wire be attached at a height no less than three-fifths of the total height of the antenna. From part A, have local regulations been met? So to figure out part B, what we have to do is figure out what three-fifths of the total height is, all right? So here, if we do three-fifths times 75, we get 45 feet. So the problem says that the height of the wire cannot be less than three-fifths, so less than 45 feet. Well, our wire is attached at 45.8 feet, so it just meets the requirement. So what we're going to say is our final answer is that the wire does meet the regulations because it is attached at 45.8 feet, which is more than the 45 foot requirement.